Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, detect and solve this auto, this anti-auto player pop-up from uh, DMO. I saw it on the forums, and one of the mods posted some code of how to figure this out. So I decided to make a video. The code wasn't complete, but it explained how to make changes to it to kind of finish it up. So I went ahead and finished it and added some other uh, features into it. So one is the basics is you have to take this image and match it to one of these. It's pretty easy if you're playing the game and looking at it, but if you're botting, you need some way to figure out what image is here and then to match it so that you don't uh, get banned or whatever they do with this. So hit start and you saw it move. It matched this image with that one. Doesn't matter which image you use. But I also added it can be anywhere on your screen. So I'll move macro program out of the way, hit start, and you can see it matched it. You can move it around, select a different image, and works pretty good. Let's select one from the bottom row. There you go. So one of the nice things that I like about this is it doesn't matter where this pops up, it'll find it anywhere on the screen and then match this icon or image to one of these 10 here. But it's not limited to just these 10. So it doesn't matter if the game is using like a bank of images, I'm sure they have more than just these 10. So they could have a hundred, thousand, it doesn't really matter. Um, the way I set this up is it just matches, it makes like a pseudo pixel pattern of this image and then matches it to one of these 10. So to prove that, I made my own, that's not one of these, of the blue eye macro icon from my uh, shortcut on my desktop. And there you see it still finds that. So it doesn't matter what image they use up here. They could have millions of images that they pull from. It doesn't matter because it's going to match whatever's here to one of these 10. So let's go ahead and take a look on how I set that up. So first off, I started out just like I did the CAPTCHA part two videos. If you watch them, you'll see basically the same thing here. If you haven't, go ahead and check those out give a lot of information about how to set this up and use it in different ways like for captures. but let's get to it so I used a if statement for pixel pattern can be located on screen so that's the important part located on screen and that's this this pop-up this box here so to set it up you just make a pixel pattern of uh, this box it could be anything really I wouldn't use these pictures because those can change just use the outside box around here like in the blue and then I used um, locate pixel pattern here just like we did in the capture videos so I know a starting point so that wherever this is on the screen I'll at least know some coordinates and then once again using some math we're gonna we can figure out where everything else is in this box once we know one coordinate which is the uh, pixel pattern of the box and it's I know it looks kinda daunting a little intimidating kinda complex but I'm gonna break this out it's actually uh, pretty easy so some of the tips when setting, setting this up the one thing I used here when locating the pixel pattern is I actually chose a specific point to start my pixel pattern off at and that's about right here the reason I did that because my pixel pattern for this image is straight up and down and I wanted to go straight up on my X coordinates and so I chose a point like right there to start it and that's so my X coordinates would be the same because one of the things when you're scripting BE if you've been using it for a while you want as few variables as uh, you can get by with it just makes it more efficient and it's less coding, less scripting you have to write out. So anything I can reuse, I'll try and do that. So what I did down here, when I'm getting the 
like I said, the three points to the pixel pattern. I chose the forehead, around the nose, and then the mouth. And like I said, I went straight up to start the pixel pattern for the box. That's so I can reuse the X coordinates. The X coordinates of this pop up, which is there, and is right in line with this first box. So I don't need separate variables, I don't have to do any extra calculations. So that's how I determine that. So let's go ahead and break this out. It'll be easier to see. All right. So like I said, I try to reuse things as much as possible. The one, another one that I was doing that with is the Y coordinates. You can see I have the Y coordinates for the top row and for the bottom row. That's these buttons here. So all these buttons are in a line. So my Y coordinates are the same across this whole top row. That's why I just use top row here. And then this is going to be the same for the bottom row. The bottom row is in a line. All the Y coordinates are the same. So down here, when we're looking at stuff, I can just use top row, the same variable right here for all of them. So all five of these in the top row, I'm using the same variable. Then in the bottom row, just switching to this one. And that's going to save me calculations and extra variables and all that. Now the X coordinates are going to change. So as you can see, I labeled them X coordinate of icon 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So basically the X coordinates are going to be different as you go across these buttons. So we do have to figure those out. Um, but the X coordinates, like we're talking about straight up and down, these boxes are directly below each other. So I only need five. I don't have to do all ten because the x-coordinate for this one is going to be the same for that one and so forth since all these are in a line. So I only need these five plus the two y-coordinates which is seven to give me all the coordinates for these which is we have ten boxes and an x and a y for each one so that's twenty potential variables there but we can get away with seven. That's almost one-third of it so to me it's pretty uh, efficient try and save time is whenever you can so what I did for the X coordinates is like I said I made the line here this is where we started if you go down let me see it's that's actually straight up from there so it's about here over by the right side of this eye so I wanted it in the center like, let me go back to the duck one. Hit start, and you can see my mouse goes to the center. So I wanted the center. Well, the center of this, where we're getting it from, doesn't line up. So all I did is subtracted a few pixels. You can see five pixels, and that brought me over to the center. So that's all the calculation is there, is going to the center. But I'm using that more than once. Um, we're using that also when we're getting the colors of the coordinates and that's important because we have it kind of start here in the center and then look within a range of 10 around which is over here but I'll get to that in a minute so I wanted to line these up with the center as you can see this one is to the left so we have to subtract but all the rest of them are to the right so we'll be adding you can use investigator and figure these out but I'll tell you a tip on that too I think in investigator it says that it's about 35 pixels from somewhere around the center to the center the same from the center here down to here is 35 pixels and that'll come in handy with this one with the Y coordinates because I just took the Y coordinate for the first one which was 110 down added 35 and it matched up perfectly so I just left it up here when I did added 35 it didn't actually go to the center it was like a little to the right or a little to the left so in, you can go in investigator and figure all these out exactly and then run it and see hey did it go to the center um, but what I did is I just added 35 and if it was a little to the right subtracted a few pixels ran it again so I didn't actually figure out any of these x-coordinates. I just 
added 35 see where it went my mouse moved to and subtracted a few pixels and that's how I got all those so that's a tip you know for figuring these out I didn't have to do a lot of calculations or anything I just let the mouse go wherever it was like over here and said hey that looks like it's about eight pixels off subtracted eight from the number ran it again is in the center just left it so that's pretty much how you come up with these um, these first Y coordinates these are the coordinates here for this first picture and all I did is take um, that first pixel pattern that coordinate from there and subtracted it was a uh, 29 pixels down so that's how I got the first one and then I just added 10 pixels so it just kept going down the first ones here then 10 pixels more is about the nose 10 pixels down is about the the mouth so I didn't actually do any calculations there either except for figuring out how far down that I want to start this pixel pattern so that's pretty much it for those so after you have that figured out I have if statements and this may look a little different but you have to make one for each of these buttons there's probably an easier way to do it there's another way that I was thinking of, of just doing a function but it requ it requires more math I have to figure out some more stuff um, and I figured that would be more complicated so I just chose hey we'll do 10 of them this whole thing repeats 10 times that way you can just copy and paste and you only have to change a, a few things since they're all basically variables anyway so in the first one like I said it looks up here and it's gonna get first the forehead what's the color at the forehead then it looks down here at these and it says hey on the forehead of this one is it the same color and is it goes down to the nose is the nose the same color and then and is the mouth the same color so if all three are the same color it it'll go ahead and click on that button I have moved a coordinate just to show you how it works all you have to do is change that to click so it makes sure that all three of them that's what the ands do they all have to be true if it's not true it'll just skip it and go to the next one so in this one it would be the first one it'll say yeah the forehead the nose the mouth those three coordinates are the same so it's gonna click on that one and you can see that here so the mouse goes to that one if it's different like it was uh, this fourth one it would go hey is it the same no and then look for the second one and it'll keep going through that and see until it matches up to the right one and these are basically just the locations of these buttons that it's looking at is this one the same as this one and if it's no it moves to the next one is this one the same as that one and so forth until it finds it then it'll click on it so that's basically how you set it up and make changes to it as you can see I'm using um, I'll explain some of the variables uh, the icon one all these are for the first one which is this one it goes one through five and it's in the top row so we all we have to change top row stays the same the only thing we have to change is from one to two and then from two to three everything else stays the same it's all variables until after we get through five so five is here and like I said for the bottom row we just go back and we'll go one through five again except we're using bottom row instead of top row so it's all variables you don't have to uh, do a whole bunch of pixel patterns or figure a lot out this will probably work for most people just uh, copying the code and letting it play it may change with your resolution so you may have to go in and change some of the numbers but uh, that's about it if you have any questions you can post on the forum or uh, post down below I'll try and answer them if you have any requests for videos or anything like that just let me know thanks